Hey, welcome back. We're in Exodus 12 today, verses 33 to 36. Here's the reading. The Egyptians urged the people to send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We will all be dead. So the people took their dough before it was leavened, and with their kneading bowls bound up in the clothes of the, on their shoulders. Now the sons of Israel had done according to the word of Moses, for they had requested from the Egyptians articles of silver and articles of gold and clothing. And the Lord had given the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they let them have their request. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. So the time has come now, and the Egyptians are urgent for the Hebrews to leave. The Egyptians fear for their lives, and after the ten plagues, yeah, you and I would be fearing for our lives too if we were in their side of the question, wouldn't we? Their fake gods have been shown to be fake gods, and uh, they don't have anything left. You know, what in the world are they going to do? They have basically nobody to defend them. Please, you guys, leave. That's, that's the story. And thousands, if not millions, are, of Hebrews are going. And even a mixed multitude. There's some who are going to say, well, Egypt is wrecked. I'm going to put my, I'm throwing in with these guys. Now, here's a question. What will they all eat? So they take for as they are departing, they take as their primary source of food, they take dough, you know, wheat that's for bread, but it's, it's unleavened. They won't have time. They have to leave quickly. And so uh, there's a point here of sudden departure. God has called them to go out suddenly. And so they're taking their dough and they, the Bible describes how they take the unleavened dough with them. And they ask and receive from the Egyptians gold and silver and articles of clothing. Those are the, some of the primary stuff in which wealth is encompassed, and they're going to take this now as they leave. Now, later in Torah, you're going to the first five books of the Bible, you're going to learn, you're going to read how when a slave, a person puts themselves into kind of this, uh, like a six or seven year plan of, of labor, where they're kind of like an indentured servant, that when a slave goes out and is given their freedom, that the owner has to uh, supply them with some degree of wealth on their way out. So they don't just like leave and they're penniless and they have to go out and start immediately stealing to survive. And so now here are the, here are the Hebrews, you know, plundering the Egyptians, taking the silver and gold and so on. And you know, you can never really give compensation for previous generations, but a current generation can receive compensation for current evil that's been done to it. But people who are dead and long dead, they can, there's no compensation. There's nothing you can do for them. God is the master of right, what's right and what's wrong. And in the long term, it is God who will recompense us. You know, there's no guarantee in this life that you or I are going to be treated with, with fairness. There's, when you were born, you didn't get a little certificate from the doctor saying, by the way, you're going to be treated fair your whole life. Welcome aboard. We don't get that. And that's not the way our world, our sin fallen, sin damaged world in which Satan is the prince of the powers of the air, you know, that's not the way this world works at the present time. So no, there's no guarantee you and I land with that says we'll be treated fair in this life. But in the long term, if we're faithful to the Lord, he will sort everything out and it will all come out in a righteous, a truly righteous way. But no, we have to reject the idea that uh, for generations past, there could be some kind of recompensation that might happen. That's just simply not the way reality works. And by the way, notice all this wealth that they're taking, it's gonna be used, kind of, it's kind of ambiguous. Part of it's going to be used to make a sanctuary, a wilderness tabernacle for the worship of the true God. And some of it's going to be used to make the golden calf, uh, which is an idol they're going to worship and many are going to lose their way and perhaps be totally lost out of that. We don't wanna get ahead of the story. We'll come to those as we come to them here in the book of Exodus. But just a, a quick reminder here that uh, material wealth is both capable of being a blessing and a curse. So whatever we are given by God, we want to use it only for blessing. All right, we'll carry on in our study tomorrow morning. God bless you.